Hey everyone, welcome back to Professional Prepper. Now I'm doing another homemade body armor video. I know, this is the exact same design as one of my previous uh, designs, but this is a full-blown prototype that I'm going to be sending to CRS Firearms. He put out a competition for the best homemade body armor design with some limitations of it has to be 10 inches by 12 inches. Here's mine with a little bit of a shooter's cut. Uh, it has to be less than 9 pounds. It has to be less than 5 inches thick. Um, and so this is my design that I'm smitting and of course this is the quarter inch thick 6061 aluminum. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description where you can pick that up uh, This is PEI level 5 ceramic tiles doubling them up and You can buy them in basically the 6 inch by 6 inch variety or 12 inch by 12 inch if you can find it and Then these are you know typically about a little more than a dollar a piece sometimes under that. This is 10 ounce weight denim and you can pick this up by the yard. So if you pick up one yard you can do it pretty easily or you can pick up two and have a little bit more extra for some other things. Um, but uh, all this is available you know, locally if you want or you can buy it off the internet. Um, so pretty good stuff. And then finally this is the Loctite construction adhesive and this is their pro line which is absolutely magical stuff. Um, and that stuff basically gives the denim uh, more tensile, compressive, and shear strength, um, as well as helps bind everything together and provide a little bit of shock resistance um, to the, the plate itself and so it won't crack, just reduce its fragility. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to Lowe's and Wally World. I'm going to show you kind of where I bought those and how you can pick them up. All right, we are here at Wally World in the fabric section. And what I got here is denim. Now this is the heavyweight denim. You can choose either or, whatever color doesn't matter. You can use the, the heaviest is the best. This is 10 ounce and here we got like a six ounce. All right, we're here in the construction adhesive aisle at the big box store. We are not gonna use liquid nails. We're gonna opt to use the Loctite Pro line three times premium, three times stronger premium construction adhesive. I've used this in the past; it's really works really well. And uh, if you want to spend a lot more money, you can use the uh, PL Max Premium. And this stuff is amazing stuff. Um, it's quite durable. It's also uh, three times the cost as your normal construction adhesive. So you can pick either one of these. Um, I just go with the Pro line, and that's uh, good enough for me. So you get about one to two, depending on what your size plate, um, but uh, two should be plenty. Um, I've done mine with just one tube before. All right, we are looking for floor tiles. And what you're gonna wanna get, something with a rating of PEI four or five. Now five is the most durable. It's the hardest as far as like the abrasion resistance on the front for the glaze. And that's gonna help break up the bullet so go with the highest PEI rating you can find so they have the fives right there and of course your typical floor tile which has a high abrasion resistance is, is a four all right but if you can find five that works best if you go into something like three that's something where you you know they're not as hard they're more for kind of like backsplashes so find the right one all right, so some steps I didn't show you was the cutting of these tiles and the cutting of the aluminum plate. Now, I bought this as a 12 by 12 plate, and so what I used to cut that is basically a 4 inch, 4 and a half inch angle grinder. Uh, and I used, uh, of course, a metal cutoff wheel here. So that's pretty typical. Um, and then for cutting the tiles, I used this uh, industrial diamond, you know, ceramic cutting wheel. So I'll put links to that in the description below. But basically, it allows you to cut through some really hard stuff. Um, bricks or masonry or anything um, like this, which is your ceramic tiles. Now, you want to go really slow with ceramic tiles because it, you know, you can on a, you know, easily crack it in places that you don't want to. Um, and so when you actually make these diagonal cuts, because it's, you know, 90 degree angle um, hatching on this back, when you do a diagonal cut, you don't want it to fracture outside of which, that diagonal portion. So what you do is kind of go at it with this, which is a little bit softer. Do real slow strokes to kind of cut through that ceramic tile. 
and then typically it'll, it'll break off once you get to around the halfway point. So um, that's that's kind of the part I didn't show that's, that's here. But now I'm gonna kind of go through the process of putting it all together. Um, and I'll go ahead and do that. And the tools you'll need is the um, your little spatula here. So this little putty knife works pretty good. And this is about you know, three inches wide, and so it's perfect for this job. Um, you'll need you know scissors if you're going to cut your denim. Um, but that's basically it. So it's pretty minimal for the tools involved here. But also make sure you have some some type of you know break clean goof off or um, some type of cleaner available acetone to get this stuff off your fingers if if you do get it on because this stuff is a pain in the ass it grips pretty well um and then also a side note i'm going to be sending him my um my typical handgun threat body armor um to just for him to shoot up as it's kind of a, a, a little side thing so anyway so let's go ahead and get to building it First thing you're going to want to do is actually moisten the back of these ceramic tiles because the adhesive that we're going to use is a moisture curing product that actually requires moisture to harden the uh, construction adhesive. So then after that's done then you're going to apply the construction adhesive to the back side of the denim in even S pattern and then you're just going to use that uh, putty knife to uh, press in and spread the construction adhesive evenly and uniformly across the denim itself. And you're going to want to make a couple of passes uh, so that way you get 100% coverage, uh, but also you want to do that so that way you can really force in the construction adhesive into the denim itself. Um, and of course, my favorite term, impregnating, <laughs> you're going to be forcing that into there so that way it um, is fully saturated. Next, you go ahead and place the ceramic tiles um, onto the uh, denim itself, of course face down, and then that backside hatching, there's gaps in there, a material gap, and so you want to fill that with that construction adhesive, and that helps bind those plates together, um, as well as to the um, additional portions that you put on there, but it fills in that void, um, so that way it resists cracking um, and makes it a more durable system. Then you wrap over those layers onto the plate, and so this um, helps bind that um, th these plates together as well. It, it kind of provides a tensile forces around the plates so that if they fracture, all the little pieces don't crumble away, and it kind of confines the material. So any any rounds going in there trying to break it up um, have to fight some of that confinement. Next, I spread some of that construction adhesive to the aluminum plate itself. And you want, anytime you're having glues, uh, it's good to have the glue on both surfaces before you sandwich them together. That sound, or once you sandwich them together, you want both surfaces trying to stick to each other. Um, and, it, and it works better if you, you do it this way. So once you have the one layer of aluminum, one layer of cer ceramic tiles with a denim on it, you go ahead and push it off to the side and start on your next uh, layer of denim. So same as before, evenly spread out the construction adhesive and use that putty knife to easily, evenly distribute it as well as pressing it into the denim surface. And so if you're taking your time, take your time here. Um, you know, you add in a little bit of the construction adhesive at a time to, you know, if you, you can always add more, but it's harder to take some away during the process. So go ahead and take your time and take it slow. And you can, you can see there, I kind of drew the outline of the plate in the very center of the denim to kind of show where I'm going to be setting the plate at and that's um, important for positioning so that way you don't have extensive overlap of the material when you start um, placing it. Um, so you see here I, I take a good amount of time getting everything even because this last wrap is probably the most important because you're going to be putting some of the denim wrapping it towards the back side of the plate itself. So. Once again, put down the layer of ceramic tiles. So this would be the front facing tiles and filling in that back um, hatching area, the waffle pattern uh, with the construction adhesive and making sure all those, those gaps are filled up. And uh, really, you know, I, for this whole project, it was probably about a tube, a tube and a quarter, I think, of that uh, construction adhesive, almost a tube and a half. And you can see here, I used a little bit too much construction adhesive but I kind of took off the excess 
excess and went ahead and then sandwiched on that top plate um, or the existing aluminum and um, tile plate system to that. So now there's two layers of the ceramic tiles and the now the wrapping of the denim now can happen on the, the full system. So that denim goes fully around all the sides. You want to make sure you get it as tight as possible and you can tuck in the edges of the denim. And this overlap of the denim will help resist the spalling that can occur on the edges of the aluminum. And while I, I don't believe it's going to stop all the spalling, um, it most certainly will aid in some level of, um, of either slowing it down or eliminating some of the smaller fragments that may not be moving too fast. So after you tuck in all the edges and trim off the excess from the edges, you can go ahead and then apply a final layer of the construction adhesive to both the front and the back side of the plate system. Now, uh, once you get everything completed on one side of it, then you can go ahead and lay down some plastic wrap onto the table, um, set it on there, and you know, flipping it, and then that way you can get to the back side of it. And so here's kind of where you just want to do a little bit of attention to detail because it is the final product. Um, and while you can kind of touch up the edges um, a little bit later with you know, sanding, it's kind of you just don't want the excess hanging off. So here you can see the saran wrap uh, down and I'm kind of putting the final touches on, making sure all the edges, everything's tucked in and everything's good to go. So um, this, uh, this process took a little bit less than Alrighty, 30 minutes. So there you go. Alrighty, folks, this is the plate. It's all complete here. Last thing I did was just wrap it up with some saran wrap. I'm going to go ahead and put this cookie sheet on top of it. All right, and something to spread a little bit of weight out. And finally, oh boy, the big, big heavy weight here is uh, this sucker is filled with all the lead ingots from from casting. So this puppy weighs about 40 pounds. <laughs> Maybe 50 pounds. So I went ahead and uh, set that guy up on there. And what's that? That's probably going to just push all of the adhesive together and make it a little bit more uniform uh, throughout all the denim and kind of compress it all together. So um, I'm going to leave this overnight. Tomorrow I'm going to open it all up and let it breathe, and that's what it needs to do to cure. It needs to get a, the moisture in there. It's a moisture-curing polyurethane, so this actually needs moisture to cure. So make sure you uh, open up, let it breathe, and then I'll be packaging it up, shipping it off to CRS Firearms, and uh, let them blast away. So good luck. We'll see how it does.